camper. For those of you who research scripture, Nimrod was a very important person. After the flood, he created what is known as the occult today. All false religions, all secret societies, witchcraft, Satanism, anything else you want to include on the dark side, they all honor and worship Nimrod. One of the ten most important Christian books of all times is Alexander Hislop's The Two Babylons, available at your local Bible bookshop. There's much to say in there about Nimrod and how witchcraft, astrology, child sacrifice, and the holidays that people keep, they all come from Nimrod worship. Before we proceed any further, let's see what Webster's Unabridged says about the term occult. The term occult can be defined as anything that intervenes between your sight and the light. When I ask people on talk radio or in expos or in speaking engagements, I always say, give me a working definition, something that you might purchase that comes between your eyes and the light. Someone in the audience always says, how about sunglasses? I have one company, I will not name them, and six of their ads on sunglasses say write us, and they include their department number, that big infamous number 666. They've combined the working definition of the word occult with this infamous number. They're located in New York. On the internet, you can find a man named Michael Hoffman. He's written a book about mind control and secret societies. In his book, he has something very powerful to say. Michael Hoffman II said in his book, Masonic Mind Control, that the alchemical managers have bred over a millennia, over a thousand years, they said they bred a human race that is most wretched, stupid, and ignorant. It's so unrivaled in thousands of years. He said these blind slaves say they are free and highly educated, even as they march behind, notice this word, signs. Have you ever taken time to analyze a sign or a billboard or a logo? He says a medieval peasant would have run away in panic-stricken terror from the signs that modern man embraces. Here's one. This is off of a building in Texas. I wonder what a medieval peasant would have thought of this particular emblem. More on it later. It's history and what year it appeared on your dollar bill. But please notice the eye. This is on a building in New York. It's constantly used in advertising. I have at least a thousand select ads with this technique. When I first discovered this technique, I did not even have a name for it. My wife and I would simply say, I found a few more ads on the eye technique. I didn't understand it had great spiritual significance. Not only is it a psychological ploy, it is very uncomfortable if someone is staring at you. Sometimes eyes are used in hypnosis, but there's something even deeper beyond that. If you'll notice, in U.S. News and World Report, they were constantly in the 80s running this survey once a year on who runs America. But why did they choose this particular emblem when they're asking the survey, who runs America? There was one banker from New York, Chase Manhattan, who was always in the top ten. But again, let's look to the scripture for all our answers. No one would believe in this term. This is superstition, and superstition does not exist in the 20th and 21st century America. So what does it say in Proverbs? He that hasteth to be rich hath an evil eye. What in the world are they talking about? Please notice the connotation. It is connected with someone that wants to be rich. I wonder if they want to get rich on Madison Avenue or Fifth Avenue in New York. Because this technique has been used in advertising for the past 100 years. But we need a second confirmation. Jesus said in the New Testament, there are a lot of evil things that can proceed out of a man's heart. One of them, he included 
an evil eye. A man's intentions can be seen in his eyes. You can be controlled by someone staring at you or controlling you. I went to the local bookstore and I discovered there was a book on the history of this whole subject. The term was known in ancient days as fascination. There are dozens of ads in the United States utilizing two eyes staring at you and in the fine print they will mock you because they will include the term fascination. I was surfing the internet and found this strange site. Here's the grandson of Aleister Crowley for researchers who are familiar with that name. It's the man who made black magic return to our century. There's much at your local library about Aleister Crowley who died in 1947. Notice on this website it's called the Order of the Evil Eye. We, don't, we do not need to read all the particulars, but please notice at the bottom it says death to Christianity. I passed six or eight billboards on my way driving here today where eyes were used to control the person in the car reading the advertisement on the billboard. But remember, Michael Hoffman said, that a medieval peasant would run away from a lot of signs and symbols that we embrace today. This one is very well known. This is Lucent Technologies. I have a little story behind this. A good crowd of Christian people are very informed about Lucent Technologies. Traveling across the country, especially in Little Rock and Denver, I noticed the biggest, the largest warehouses in the country are owned by Lucent Technologies. I also read that they purchased office space at 666 Fifth Avenue, New York, but it's quite okay. Someone has to purchase office space in that building. So notice, not only do we have a red circle, which is a very important symbol in the occult, but it is white in one place. It is the serpent biting its tail, which is an old symbol for Lucifer. All of these facts are very well known. Now I will introduce a fact that is not known has not been discussed by researchers in this country. It is actually a Hebrew letter. It is the Hebrew letter Samic. And this letter is portrayed by this symbol. But the Hebrew letter Samic means a sign or a prop. Notice this is a lucent sign. I was at an expo in Columbus, Ohio. I had a friend travel all the way from Detroit to exchange information. He was a retired dental surgeon. Someone told us there was a headquarters at the edge of town. He said, Al, would you like me to rush out, get a photograph for your research? I said, yes, make sure you get the red O on the sign. So this retired dental surgeon rushed out to get it before it got too dark. This is a public street. I suppose it's a public building. But when he snapped the photograph, the security guard came out and threatened to arrest him. But my friend was an only child, even though he's 65, headed towards his 70s, he still gets his way. So he backed off very slowly, talking at the same time until he got close to the car and he threw his camera in and drove off. I did not know it was against the law to photograph a sign in a major city. I guess we have a lot to learn, don't we? Have you seen this emblem before. There was a controversy in the 80s. This is a typical article that appeared in the newspapers discussing this symbol on a lot of products. There was a big fuss. There was a boycott. People took extreme measures. I do not agree. They went to the plant at Procter & Gamble. They threw paint on some of the employees' cars. That is not how you deal with issues, whether you are right or wrong. You don't take up violence. You don't create a wrong against a wrong. The way you fight evil is get to the bottom of things and get the truth out. You can prop up a lie, but a truth will stand on its own. The president of the company made a press release. He said none of the money in this company goes to the devil. That's probably correct. I am not going to critique Procter & Gamble at all. I am not going to say anything about that company. 
because it was probably the truth. But it is interesting that on the Phil Donahue show, this president of Procter & Gamble finally admitted that he was a member of the Church of Satan. So maybe the company is clean as a whistle, but maybe sometimes powerful people slip into high places.